You speak your future into the world. You speak yes. your future. Whatever you say, whatever falls off your tongue, when, when you say, I am, right? The unconscious mind says, and you are so. Whatever comes on the other side of that. And so you 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 ask me a hard question, which one is most important? The thought of, it starts with the thought. I think the thought is the that's where everything originates. And then you add a whole lot of turbo boost to it with your tongue. Most people are not living their dreams because of fear, ladies and gentlemen. I was in Columbus, Ohio yesterday speaking for a particular Ohio department. Young lady named Karen who greeted me, who organized the event. Very talented, very skillful. And she was talking about she wanted to become involved in the consulting business. I said, why aren't you doing it? I said, you have the abilities. I said, you're not here because they like you. You're here because you're doing the job. You're making things happen. And she came up with all kinds of ideas. But finally, she said, I guess I, I can't see myself doing it. I guess I'm afraid. Fear, limited vision, and lack of self-esteem is what keep most people doing things they don't want to do. I was flew from Columbus, Ohio to Denver, Colorado to a major communications company. And the person that picked me up at the airport told me about the fact that the company was planning on having a major downsizing. And they offered some of the employees there an early retirement and some of them will earn as much as $300,000. And they said, this is the last time that you can take this offer. If you don't do it, when we have the downsizing, you might be among those who will lose their jobs and all you will get is your severance pay. And only 50% of the people who were eligible to take the $300,000 took it. The others were afraid to take a chance on themselves. The others couldn't see themselves beyond that company. They couldn't see life after that company. The same reason that people stay in relationships where they're abused or they're unhappy or it's unfulfilling. They can't see themselves beyond that relationship. They can't see themselves enjoying life without that person. They think that this is all that they can do. The same reason that people get stuck at a certain level in life. They can't see things being better for them. And they think that this is it and this is all they deserve. This is all they've ever seen. It's been passed on to them. And they think that this is it for them. Oh no. Everyone experiences extreme stress at some point in their life. I don't care who we are. Something happens outside our control and it hits our life and it knocks us on our tail. It might be a health stress. It could be something with your family. It could be economic, career. It could be something emotional that happened, biochemical. There's so many things. It could be an environmental situation that had nothing to do with you. Every one of us in our lifetime are experiencing extreme stress in these days. Because of the economy and the way we respond to it, the majority of people are experiencing some form of extreme stress, at least according to polls. Stress doesn't come from the facts. Stress comes from the meaning that we get from facts. Yes, those things have happened. But the real question is, if we fight what's happened, we've got a problem. We've got to decide, what are we going to do with what's happened in our life? How are we going to take this? How are we going to mold this? How are we going to turn our life around? Because when you come up with a new meaning, you get a new life. We're going to take a look at something from a different perspective. We're going to ask you this question. What is the single force that controls the quality of your life? If there was one gift our Creator has given us, or the universe, whatever you believe, what is it, what is the one power that you have right now in this moment that can change everything? You have it, I have it, we all have it. This one singular individual power that can change anything in our life, regardless of what's happened to us. And I know you know the answer. The answer is the power of choice. The one thing we have in this world is we can't control the events. But we can choose what to focus on, we can choose what things mean, and we can choose what to do. Those three choices, those three decisions, really control our life. It's not so much the conditions of our life that control our destiny as much as the decisions of our life. Try for a second to think about something. Think about your life and just think about are there a few decisions, if I were to ask you two decisions you've made in your life, you know, that if you would have made a different decision, you would have had a totally different life. I mean, it may be a life may have been better, it may have been worse, I don't know, but you would have a different life. I'm not asking you to, to buy into the fact that you should have known the answers, I just want you to see the power of a decision. Do you want to go to college? I say, yes ma'am, I'm going to college. She said, Inky, um, the chances of that happening slim to none. Like, I'm not trying to crush your dreams, but I can't play with your future. It just doesn't happen. I said, just give me a shot. 
The first day I get to the school, I see why everybody said what they said. There was a cop at every single door, metal detectors. And I'm still hyped. My man starts searching me. His exact words were, what's your plan, little man? I said, oh, man, I'm going D1. I'm going to college. He says to me, you'll probably go to cell block D1. He said, you had two uncles coming to the same place, great little ball players. He said, aren't they serving 13 and 40 years at the federal penitentiary, not even 10 minutes away from these front doors? I said, yep. He said, exactly. Apple don't fall far from the tree. When I got my scholarship from Tennessee and got back to Crim High School, the first person I went to see was that cop in the lunchroom. He said, how did you do it? He said, the reason I said it to you, he said, don't get it twisted. You thought I was trying to break you. I wasn't. He said, I've seen so many kids step up to me and say the same thing. They end up dropping out their freshman year. And so I wanted to challenge you to see would you retreat or would you step up to me and fight for the thing that you said you wanted. I'm intrigued in life how when a person say they want something and the only thing it takes is for the circumstance to change. I'm intrigued by that. Right? How a circumstance can take that away. In life, people don't burn out because of what they do. People burn out because life makes them forget why they do it. When it's about something greater than themselves, the opposition, the adversity, and the challenges are part of the journey. That's why it's so easy to spot people that's just out for their personal gain. Because all it takes is for something not to go the way that they thought it was going to go, and now they no longer want it. And so when I got to Tennessee, it was Mayberry for me. And I come into my junior year, and I'm about to get exactly what I want. I'm about to get this thing called NFL. This thing that I've been working for. Like everything revolved around this game and I finally get in the position in my life to where now I'm 10 games away from it. NFL on top of the paper, Inky Johnson projected top 30 automatic multi-millionaire. Just play the next 10 football games, Inky, you made it. And I go out in a silly game against Air Force and I go to make a tackle and when I hit him, every breath in my body left. I fall to the ground, I blacked out. When my eyes open, guys run over, Ink, let's rock, man, let's go, let's finish them off. And I'm like, I, I can't. They said, what do you mean you can't? I said, I can't move. I, said, I can't feel anything. Doctor says to me as he's walking beside me, I don't know how you're still alive, son, you don't have any pulse. I'm sitting there and people coming into my room like, Inky, man, I'm sorry about what happened to you. I'm like, man, that's really the only thing you wanted, huh? Like, the only thing you really wanted was the NFL, that's it. I'm like, man, you limited God to that? Like life holds no substance, no value. And now the thing I placed my identity in, now it was gone. That's why I laugh at people when they say, man, if I could just get this, I'll be. Man, if I could just get this amount of money, I'll be. I'm like, ooh. What happens when God says yes and no? Like, do you have the ability to accept what you don't understand? Can you handle when things get off course? I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, like, man, I'm eight games away. Like, let me get the contract then redirect me so I can help my family. And God is like, no, son, I need you to really go that way. And I'm like, you sure? Like, I need to go this way. He's like, no, I need you to go this way. I got something greater for you. Now, it might take a little longer to manifest, but I got something even sweeter. I got something, son, that's going to carry you for the rest of your life. And I thought it was over after football got redirected. My life got redirected two, three more times before I even fell into my purpose and my mission. I'm thinking I'm going to be a coach. God's like, no, you ain't. I'm like, well, maybe I'm supposed to go back to Atlanta and work in my neighborhood at the rec center. I get to Atlanta, I call the guy, he don't answer the phone. The only thing I had at that moment was a prayer and a book. And the prayer that I prayed was, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do. But people keep coming to me, telling me, speak, Inky, you need to speak. And I'm like, I'm not speaking. People coming, Inky, you need to speak. I'm like, no, man. And God brought me to the point where I had nothing and I was on my knees. I said, Lord, listen. I don't know if this is what you want me to do, but I submit and let's rock. And the next morning I woke up, I had my book I had written, and I got up and I looked at my wife. I said, I'm going to take this book to Oprah. Do you know Oprah? I'm like, nope. You know anybody at Harpo Studio? I'm like, nope. She said, go for it. And so I got my book. I got my suit. It's hot. Every door that opened, I ran in it. I'm, hey, man, Inky Johnson, drove from Atlanta. They're like, get out of here. So after getting kicked out of like four doors, I go to the back of the building. I sit down, I put my back on the building, look up to the sky, and I'm like, God, I thought it was you. And I get up and I walk around the side of the building. I look down the sidewalk, and at this moment, there was nobody but Oprah and the security. She said, hey, that's a nice suit. I said, thank you. I said, I drove from Atlanta. I wanted to get you my book. So would you mind taking a picture? You take a picture. And 
and I'm going to walk off. And her security says to me, hey, young man, come here. He said, what just happened never happens. So I leave. I start to put the picture on social media, send it to my friends, everybody's reaction. You going to be on a book club? You going to be on a show? I'm like, what just happened? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I'm like, God, are we moving like that? Don't know nobody on Oprah's staff and look at my wife and say, I'm going to meet Oprah. And God puts me face to face with Oprah and puts the book in her hand. I said, God, let's go. I live my life a certain type of way according to the power that I know the Lord possesses. I live my life a certain type. Like when I go to the Lord in prayer, I go bold. Like, and I know the initial reaction when we go through things is to say, man, why did this have to happen to me? And this is an honest reaction. And some of the things we go through, I'm going to just be real. It's not, a, it's not a scripture board. But this is what I've understood. In life, some people don't need you to preach a sermon. They need you to live one. 